Hello everybody, welcome back to the Marco Book Club First Edition 2020. This month we are reading Circe by Madeline Miller. I was really excited to read this book. I'd heard a ton about it before I opened it up. And that's because this book's been talked a lot about. Uh, it is a retelling of the classic Greek tale, the Odyssey, the oldest um, spoken epic poem of Western culture, uh, but importantly, it's told from the perspective of Circe, who in the Odyssey was an evil witch that turned Odysseus's men to pigs before seducing Odysseus and uh, staying with him on her island uh, for a year. So. I'm a big fan of Greek mythology. I've always enjoyed reading stories, and I've, I, I read the Odyssey um, first uh, in high school, and then later, um, after college, I read it when I was traveling, and I, when I was doing my first travel writing. Uh, and I really loved it, because it's really, an, it's a travel story. And it starts off with Odysseus after he's um, been in this big war, the battle for Troy, the Greeks against the, the Trojans, and he's on his way home, and he's about to, you know, he should be just going home to Ithaca, but he, uh, for a series of reasons, he doesn't pray to the gods to honor them enough, and he is blown off course, and it takes him over 20 years to get back home. He loses most of his men, and uh, basically comes back many, many years later. And it's a, it's a huge odyssey, obviously, hence the name. And um, Circe is just a minor character in that book. Uh, that story is really mostly about Odysseus, and in that sense, it's kind of the classic, uh, like, male-dominated take on history, where there's a single protagonist who does all these amazing things, he's really glorified as a hero, and it's through his perspective that we learn about the world, in this case, the Greek, ancient Greek world. But the ancient Greek world is really complex, and Greek gods in particular are super fascinating, because they're not like the Judeo-Christian gods, where there's like this image of perfection. Greek gods are by nature imperfect. They're very human. They're jealous. They get have affairs. They get caught having the affairs. They're punished by their angry wives and their jealous husbands and all this sort of stuff. There's like all this intrigue. And Circe uh, is what they call a minor, a minor immortal. She's a, ne a, a naiad, which is essentially like a nymph. Um, they have some powers, uh, but they're not exactly like. Athena, like the, the Olympians, or even the Titans, who are the creators of the world, like Helios and um, all these other ones who were some of the major gods, you know, like the, the first gods of the world. Um, they don't have that level of power, uh, so it's really interesting to hear about the Greek world through her perspective. But let's back it up just a little bit. The book is written by Madeline Miller. She is a, uh, an expert in classics. Uh, she got a BA and an MA in classics at Brown University, um, and she has written two books along this theme. The other one, uh, The Song of Achilles, was her first book, and that's about the Iliad, which in, in, in ancient Greek, um, Homer wrote the Iliad and then the Odyssey. There are two parts. The first part is about the Battle of Troy and the story of Achilles, who's the hero of that story, and the second is the Odyssey, which is the Odysseus's return back from the battle. Uh, the first book that she wrote, uh, The Song for Achilles, was um, actually told from the perspective of um, uh, Achilles' lover, his intimate, his friend, but in the, uh, the case of Madeline Miller, she kind of elaborates it and makes it uh, makes him Achilles' lover. So in that sense, it's kind of telling the story from you know a homosexual or bisexual perspective, which you know was tolerated and encouraged back in the day in Greece, but um, is kind of an overlooked aspect of their culture. And in this book, in a similar way, Circe tells the story. So I really liked Greek mythology growing up because. Uh, specifically when I was reading as a second time as a young uh, young author, I loved how whenever Odysseus would get in a problem, he would just be like, oh, it's not my fault. Like, you know, Apollo is angry at me. And, you know, I just need, to, that's, I didn't screw up. It's really just the gods are out to get me. And I loved how they could just use that excuse all the time. Like, could you imagine doing that today? Being like, I'm sorry I'm late for work, but, you know, Apollo really just has it out for me. I didn't really, uh, pay proper respect to him and he's just got a vendetta against me these days. That's kind of how Odysseus goes around excusing his own behavior. And in this book, I thought Odysseus would play a big role, but he really doesn't. It's actually more about Circe 
uh, and humanizing her perspective. And this is what's important. You know, in Western culture, female mysticism has always been demonized historically. And so Circe, as a female mystic um, and an immortal, is actually, you know, cast as an evil witch. She's not like Calypso. Calypso is the witch that kept Odysseus for nine years, but Circe turned his men into pigs and you know, she was kind of seen as a, an obstacle for Odysseus to overcome. This book talks more about who she is, how she got to be there, why is she this witch that's exiled to this island that Odysseus comes across. And she t they tell the story of how, you know, she grew up amongst the Titans. Her dad is Helios, the sun god. And so she grew up with this big powerful family. She really wasn't understood. She's kind of like, uh, you know, she's a sensitive being in a really harsh world of the uh, of Mount Olympus. But it, it just gives nuance and texture to her life and through it, the Greek world in general. Um, you start to understand what it would be like to be a, a, an immortal, especially like a minor, uh, a minor immortal, not one of the big gods, but the one who's kind of in the, in the gray zone between these huge powerful entities and mortals. And it's also told from her perspective as an immortal, somebody who's timeless, what it's like to interact with humans, to fall in love with humans who are only around for a blink of an eye in the, in the life of an immortal. You know, a human lifespan is very short. Circe is immortal, so through her perspective we see everything from the, the early dramas of Mount Olympus, such as the punishment of Prometheus, all the way through the arrival of demigods, such as Jason and the Argonauts, um, Odysseus himself is a demigod, and then the creation of these sort of mythical monsters, such as the Minotaur. Um, you, you kind of get through her perspective, she actually touches on so many different stories from Greek mythology that you come away understanding it, not in like a really, uh, you know, harsh, hard to understand dense way, but in a very lively telling. This is like a novel. It's, I mean, it is a novel and it's, it reads really quickly. It's 400 pages, but you do, you do really get through it. It took a little bit of time for me to get into it, and I think that's because, you know, coming with the perspective of the Odyssey, I mean, that is like a book that's really male-oriented. It's like it starts off in the middle of the action after a war, and there's people, there's like a man against nature and gods and obstacles, and this is, it's more feminine. It totally is, and it's its a feminist take on history to kind of, to counter the yangishness of that sort of uh, that sort of take on history I described through the Odyssey with something a little more yinish and a little, little more, uh, yeah, a little softer, more, more emotional, um, more subtle. And I think it's beautiful in that regard. I think that having both read both the Odyssey and Circe, I really appreciate both perspectives and I think it gives you a more nuanced and full view of Greek mythology. So that's what we're going for in this book club. Let's try to expand some horizons and, and learn about new perspectives. Um, you know, like I said before, I really have the intention this year of shifting between male-female authors, fiction, non-fiction, and trying to get everything to be a bit more diverse. So in that vein, this was my first pick for 2020. I'm really happy with it. I hope you guys like it. Um, and let me know what you think about Circe. Let me know what you think about um, Greek mythology in general. Is it something that you're interested in? If so, what's your favorite Greek god? Let me know which of the, the gods that you met in this book or through other other uh, Greek stories that you like the most. I don't know if I had to pick one, which would be my favorite. I've always liked Athena, although without spoiling it, I think Athena is not necessarily a good character or a favorable character in this story. Um, I've always enjoyed the goddess of wisdom, but maybe I'm just evolving and getting out of my head and into my body and emotions, but I'm realizing that this goddess of wisdom is lacking certain things because she's kind of mechanical and, uh, and she doesn't really have a lot of heart going on. So um, it's a pretty interesting book. I hope that you like it. Uh, and I've got a new book coming up. So next month's book is going to be The Overstory. Um, which is a book about trees, and I will leave it at that. That's our mail fiction coming up for next month. So there'll be a link to that book down below in the description. Uh, in the meantime, let me know what you thought about this book. Thank you guys for watching. I love seeing your photos, so when you guys get this book, please take a photo, upload it to Instagram, tag it with the hashtag Marco Book Club, tag me, I'll reshare them on Instagram. Of course, if you guys have any ideas, your feedback, you can send me direct messages, send me a video, I'll reshare it if I can and, and respond to you as, as, uh, as, as we go ahead and read this book together. Um, I really loved it, looking forward to what comes next. I'm actually, I'm flying out of the country in like a couple hours. This is my last 
stay in this apartment for six months. I will be on the road traveling for six months. Um, I'm pretty sure by now I have announced why that is on the Vagar Brothers YouTube channel. There's a big change happening in my life. I'm really excited about it. And I'm looking forward to, to allowing uh, the books that come to this book club to come more in flow. Stuff that I discover along the way, rather than books I've read in the past and want to share with you, I kind of just want to discover books organically and let them um, come to us as a group. So, if you have any recommendations, you're free to put those books uh, in the comment section below. I'm going to read through all the comments and uh, I will try to take your recommendations and see if I can integrate it into our book club. So, thanks for watching. Um, as I always say, travel widely, think deeply, and I'll see you next week. Later.